Welcome back. Well, uh, you saw there, Breastlink Laguna Hills, but today we have on a doctor from their newest location down there in Newport Beach, uh, right around the uh, Newport Center down there. We have Dr. June Chen, who is a breast dedicated radiologist. Nice to have you here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and you're lucky you get to be in there location right down there and uh, Newport Beach so it's, beautiful. Uh, it's great to have you up here today but <laughs> I'm you. sure uh, you work with all the locations as well, well right do. Yes. so today we're going to talk about mammograms and um, people often get confused about a lot of things how often they should have one of course but what is the difference between a screening and a diagnostic mammogram aren't I always thought they're kind of the same. Okay, so they are different. Uh, so the screening mammogram is performed on women who don't have any complaints or breast okay. problems at all. And uh, so a screening mammogram is used to, to, to detect early breast cancers okay. before they can be felt by the woman or mm -hmm. her doctor. And the reason that this is important is because the earlier that we can detect breast cancer, mm -hmm. the less aggressive the surgery needs to be, Okay. Uh, the less aggressive and frequency of requirement for possible chemotherapy and increased survival rate. So it's very important. On the other hand, a diagnostic mammogram is performed on women who have a clinical complaint of okay. their breast. They have a sign or a symptom that's concerning to them. And these can be either found by the woman herself okay. or they can be found by her doctor. Uh, clinical complaints and signs and symptoms include breast lumps. Mm -hmm. It could be a hardening of the breast. It could be a localized thickening. It could be a focal area of persistent pain that doesn't let up over several months. Okay. It can be nipple discharge or otherwise known as leaking mm -hmm. of some liquid from the breast nipple. So any of these signs and symptoms would have the patient be ordered as a diagnostic mammogram. Now the differences are in a screening mammogram, each breast receives on average two views so two x-rays of the breasts are taken for each okay. breast. However, in a diagnostic mammogram, usually there are more than two views taken. And the reason is we will take some extra special focused mammograms mm -hmm. directly to the area of clinical concern, directly to the area that we need to evaluate further because there's a question of whether or not there's a problem. Okay. So as far as screening goes, is this is something that uh, women should start getting in, a, in their 20s and beyond? So that's a very it, good question, and there is some controversy, and I'm sure that mm -hmm. you're well aware in the news sure. there, there have been quite a bit of controversy. Uh, at Breastlink, we follow the guidelines that are set forth by the major medical organizations that have breast cancer experts on okay. their board. This includes the Society of Breast Imaging, the American College of Radiology, the American College of OBGYN. Okay. Their guidelines are that a, an average risk woman begins screening mammogram at age 40. Okay. And then they continue the screening mammogram annually. So every year they're to have the screening mammogram. Um, there is no upper age limit, because that's often a question that's posed to mm -hmm. me. When do we stop? That's a very individualized answer. Okay. So it is generally accepted that when a patient reaches the age of 75, mm -hmm. she should have a personalized conversation with her doctor to assess her health, okay. her overall generalized health. If she's in great health and she could undergo a biopsy if something were to be found and she has many life years ahead of her, she needs to continue having an annual mammogram. Mm -hmm. And given this day and age, Women and men are living right. longer and longer, well into their 80s and 90s, and healthy, and uh, you know, keeping fit. And, yeah, and, exactly. and, and And so it's very important for them to continue receiving these mammograms. Um, so there's really no upper age limit. Now, if the patient has other risk factors, mm -hmm. such as a very strong family history of breast cancer, right. perhaps in her mother or sister, in her 40s or maybe even in their 30s, then the patient 
would need to start screening mammogram even earlier than okay. age 40. But again, that's that's a subset of population. That's a special uh, a group of women, and they need to have a personalized conversation with their doctor. Okay, so it almost kind of follows the same similar type guidelines for men when it comes to colonoscopies. It's like if there's a lot of history in your family, you may start having sooner. that sooner. Mm -hmm. What happens, um, I, I imagine it can be very troubling for someone that they go to have a screening and then they are asked to come back and it, I would think that in their minds, uh oh, they found something. So tell us yes, when I, you would when you would do that and why. Okay, so I see that every day in my practice, and I'm mm -hmm. glad you're asking me about that uh, because when a woman receives her screening mammogram, she usually will come into the office and leave, and her results are mailed to her in mm -hmm. in the U.S. Postal Mail within okay. 30 days. So she receives a letter from okay. from the office and facility. The vast, vast majority of those letters indicate it is a normal mammogram. Your okay. results are normal. We, we will see you in one year. Okay. However, about 10% of women will receive a, a, a letter that states, we found something that we're questioning. Mm -hmm. It might be abnormal. We need you to return to the office and we need to do some more workup. We need to do some more imaging. Okay. Now that imaging could be additional special mammographic views, such as a diagnostic mammogram. Now we want those special views directed to the area that the radiologist is questioning, or it could be a breast ultrasound, or it can include both. But what I okay. think is very, very important that I want to stress is that the vast majority of women who receive this, this letter stating that they need to come back for additional imaging, those prove to be normal after the additional imaging is done. So okay. after the special mammographic views and the additional views are taken and or after the ultrasound, it's proven that everything's normal. It just needed that additional clarification right. because what happens is I think women get these letters and they automatically think the worst. They think, oh my goodness, I have sure, breast cancer. Of course. And they're not able to sleep, they're not able to eat, they're very stressed. Mm -hmm and uh, they're thinking the worst and so by the time they come and see us it's really not been healthy for them for the even right. if it's a day or an evening that's right yes. and w and because the vast majority of these are normal i don't want that to happen to our, our ladies and the ladies uh, so i think it's really important to remember that okay that would be true of anyone getting a response after a test saying you know, we need to look at things further. Uh, I'm going to uh, skip ahead here because I think this is an important question. Can you have mammograms if you have implants? The answer to that is yes, you can. And even more importantly, yes, you absolutely should be getting your okay. mammograms. So not only can you, but you should be. So implants will make it a little bit more difficult to see your 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 breast tissue mm -hmm. because there's an implant that can hide portions of it. Right. Now the way that we get around that is as we discussed previously with a screening mammogram we ordinarily take two views of mm -hmm. each breast but it in order to try to move the implant out of the way so that we can see a woman's breast tissue better we do two additional views. Okay. So now if a woman has an implant each breast receives four mammograms, four views. Okay. And so that's our way of getting around the implant and really trying our best to still see the surrounding breast tissue around the implant. Okay, because you're really looking at, at all sides, but particularly, I would say, behind, right? Uh, and so or all, I think it's a good, good, good way to think about it is all sides. Okay. We want to look at all parts of the breast and some implants are behind the muscle and some are in front of the muscle. It doesn't matter where your implant is, you should still get your okay. screening annual mammogram and we do our best to see all parts of your breast still. Okay, and finally, what about 3D mammography? Is it something that is used during a screening or is it uh, more for diagnostic? So a 3D mammography, also known as tomosynthesis mammography, is the newest digital mammography. Okay. It can be used for screening or diagnostic. Okay. Uh, the difference is, is that it's a series of low-dose mammograms obtained in an arc, and it's 
so that the breast can be reconstructed mm -hmm. in very, very thin slices. What that does is it allows a radiologist to see through the layers of the breast okay. better. It reduces the superimposition, which is also known as the overlap of a normal breast tissue. Okay. And that's really important because when there's overlap of breast tissue, it can hide a small cancer. So the 3D mammography does allow us to find some can certain types of cancers a little right. bit earlier. So it's important. It's, okay. it's, a, it's a really nice new type of digital mammography. And uh, Medicare is covering that cost now as of this year because there, there is a slight extra cost to it, but Medicare covers it now. So it's something that we recommend. Okay, and I now think does that mean technology. during a screening, someone would ask for that or is that done automatically or so when do you decide to use that technique? The, the woman's doctor okay. needs to order it. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much Dr. Jun Chen with uh, Breastlink and of course uh, they're right over here in Laguna Hills and June is down in Newport Beach, but uh, she works with all the different areas. And uh, gr a pleasure to meet with you and talk with you. you. Fantastic. Thank you.